Welcome back aliens, my name is Navin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about Neo Blockchain. Specifically we'll talk about the white paper of a Neo Blockchain. In the first video we have talked about the basics of it and then we are moving towards the smart contract development, right? And of course we'll see some examples as well. But sometime, or not sometime, it's every time whenever you write a code, it's important to understand the technology. And the best way to, to learn a blockchain technology is to read a white paper. I mean, irrespective of which blockchain you go for, it's important to go with the white paper first. Now, of course, this white paper is very important. You have to read this from start to end to understand it properly. We'll go through some important points which will be useful for the tutorials. Okay, we'll focus on the important point. Uh, so this is the official documentation of NEO, which you can see on the screen. Uh, we have a NEO white paper. I will share the link in the description so that you can read it from top to bottom. Now, what is the idea behind a blockchain? I mean, of course, we can link a blockchain technology to a cryptocurrency. But you have to also remember that we can use blockchain to build applications. We call them as dApps, right? Now, why are we are doing it? See, uh, we are basically trying to solve one issue, which is the trust issue, right? And whenever we have an asset, it can be a currency, it can be a physical asset. We want to represent everything in the virtual world or in the blockchain world. So somewhere we have to take a physical asset and convert that into a virtual asset. Now this can be a simple phone, uh, this can be a, a house, this can be NFTs, uh, paintings, right? And we do that, right? So we basically take a physical asset and we put that into a digital asset. And the most important thing is, of course, we can do that by taking a picture as well. But the most important thing is we need to know who owns that particular asset. Right. So we have to link it with the hash value and we have to put that data somewhere which will not be deleted. So no one should be able to modify it. And that's where the emerge of blockchain is coming. Right. Because it, that, that's where it is emerging. Because we can save a physical asset into a virtual form or digital asset into a blockchain and you can track it. So that's the first point we have here. So basically using NEO, we are trying to build a smart economy where the first point is a digital assets. If you see the white paper, it says a digital assets are programmable assets that exist in a form of electric data, uh, electronic data. Basically you take a physical asset and you convert that into digital asset and it should be able to track it. So you should be able to track that particular asset and you can actually send that asset from person to person or from company to company. The way you buy NFTs, the way, the way you buy, let's say you want to buy a property. So you don't have to physically use papers, you can use a virtual asset, you can use NFT for a house and you can just, uh, you know, you can trade with that. Uh, but then one thing to remember, whenever you talk about transferring of assets from one person to other person, how will you do it? And for that you have to write a code. And that code in the blockchain world, we call it as a smart contracts. So imagine smart contracts as a simple code, which you can use to transfer asset. Maybe if you know programming, it can be a simple variable by saying, hey, we got a sender, we got a receiver, uh, this is an asset. So we are sending this asset to this person, provided there are some conditions which are met. Maybe if you receive an amount in your bank account or maybe in, a, in your crypto wallet, uh, maybe there is a shipment which you want to do. Once a customer receives the shipment, then the transfer should happen. So those are the conditions you can mention, right? And it can be done with the help of smart contract. So the moment you talk about smart contract, we have two types of asset here. The first one is a global asset and the second one is a contract asset. So we have a global asset and a contract asset. And you can guess it right, right? So global asset means global, it can be accessed from anywhere. How about the contract asset? Now this is specifically for the smart contracts. So which can be used inside a smart contract. Now that makes sense, right? So we have a digital asset which comes from the physical world. The second one is the identity a digital identity. So for every access, you, how do you prove that you are that person? So example, if you say, hey, I own this uh, NFT, if I own this house, what's the proof? And that's why we need identity. How do you prove yourself? Of course, we have to use a certificate. So in the cryptography world, or you can say in the PKI standard, we use something called X509 certificate to prove yourself. Uh, that's a certificate, right? But when you go there, when you use an application, how will you prove? Example, let's say when you use an iPhone, of course you have a face ID, you have a, you have a fingerprint ID, if you're using an old one. Uh, I have an iPad which still has a fingerprint ID, but you, you got the point, right? You have to prove yourself, you have to show, you have to uh, prove that you are that person which you're claiming to be. Uh, and that is your digital identity. And that's very important in the blockchain world, right? Because when you say you own something, you have a wallet. And in a wallet, you have a very important phrase with you, which is your private key. And to access that private key, you need to have some identification, maybe your uh, fingerprint or face ID, something which you can prove. 
And also, when you talk about certificate, we have to also maintain a, a list of certificate which are revoked, right? Because, of course, get, getting a certificate is important, it's easy. But how about if you lose a certificate, if you do something and if, you, if it is expired? So there has to be a list where you can say this is revoked list. And everything will be mentioned there. So once we got an asset, once we know the identity, was the next thing. Uh, remember we, we talked about smart contract now smart contract is actually a, not a new term which is coined now it's there from a long time and maybe if you are exploring blockchain from a long time you know the history right uh, we got bitcoin but before bitcoin as well there were some thoughts of using smart contracts smart economy or something like that now even before, even before that they tried to use cryptocurrencies they tried to use smart contracts and this term was coined by nick sabo in 1994 so how do you define a smart contract? Maybe you can say a contract. So if, if a particular condition met, you can say that's a contract and you can execute that now. If it is happening automatically with the help of some programs, you can say it's a smart contract, right? So in the new world, we, to achieve that, we have something called Neo contract. So what is a Neo contract? So Neo contract is a smart contract system and it's one of the biggest feature in the developer ecosystem for, for the blockchain. And the most important thing which I loved about this and we have talked about this before as well, it supports multiple programming languages. You don't have to learn a new language. In this series, we are going to start with C but yes, uh, if you get enough time, we'll also explore some other languages as well. But then, you know, it also provides you something else. In fact, we'll talk about the application ecosystem later. But when you use a programming language, when you build an application, it's very important for us to have a virtual machine. Uh, no, we don't need a JVM machine here, but we have something called Neo Virtual Machine where you can run your code. Next, we have to understand is the application and ecosystem. Uh, see, I always believe when you talk about blockchain field, uh, when you talk about the blockchain world, only those blockchain will survive when you have a proper ecosystem and Neo does provide it. And if you talk about the blockchain, of course, you have multiple nodes. Your node can be a light node. It can be a full node. Of course, this is the same concept there, but then a different term will be used here, light node, a fully functional node. And we can also have a wallet, which is hardware wallet. That's fine. But we'll initially, we'll work with a light node in our machine, not with the full node. Uh, in fact, the idea is to also work with the private network. Because see, when you build an application, you can deploy that on a public network. But when you build it to test it, we can use that in a private network and that should be our next video, right? Uh, the next thing you, you have here is uh, if you have worked on Ethereum or the other platform, so basically whenever you have a blockchain, whenever you do a transaction, you can explore all the transactions, all the blocks on a website. Uh, the best thing about this is it provides you a development kit, uh, a toolkit basically, where you, can, where you get something called a blockchain explorer inbuilt. You just click on a button and you will see all the blocks coming up. And in every few seconds, you will see a new block. And we have also discussed about this one. This is the SDK development kit. It's not just support one language, it supports multiple languages and you have it there. Now, the best thing is whenever you work with a language, whenever you work with a blockchain and it is picked up blockchain, when you work on simple application, you need IDE support as well. Because to make small projects, normal notepad or simple editor works. But then when you want to build big projects, when you want to build a project which are bug free, uh, getting an IDE support will be helpful. And in Neo, you, get, you do get that. And we will be using Visual Studio Code, which does provide you with the plugins option and extensions. Now, next, most important in terms of management model. In fact, we have already, already talked about it just to you know reiterate. Neo has two native tokens. One is Neo, and second is the gas. So if you want to do the transfers, uh, transaction fee, then we'll be using gas. And your native coins are Neo coins. So in total, we have 100 million tokens available for NEO and they were launched at the start of the blockchain itself. In the Genesis block, it is mentioned and the gas will be generated as we go. And I guess the total limit is also, yeah, the total limit is also 100 million and it will be done. It will be done in approximately 22 years. It's a long time. And then we have also talked about this before as well, right? So NEO tokens will be used for the governance purpose as well. So that's one thing. And this is distribution not required for the upcoming video. So you can just read this and we'll go ahead. Apart from this, we have chain governance. So we'll talk about this later. Now, what is important to understand is the technology implementation. And the most important thing, in fact, when you talked about basic of blockchains, we start with this topic, which is the consensus mechanism. Uh, do we use POW, POS here? No, we have a different one, which is DBFT 
which is the delegated Byzantines fault tolerance. So to understand this, we have to understand one. Let me just show you how it works. So let's say this actually started with a problem called a Byzantines general problem, which is, let's say we have five to six generals and they want to invade a particular city or a country. And they can win this or they will be successful only when they all attack at the same time. And the twist is they are not located at the same place. They are in different location and the only way they can succeed is if they attack at the same time or if they treat at the same time. So how will they do it? Uh, maybe uh, we can do a phone call or a WhatsApp message. No, we actually we are talking about the back old time uh, where the, the services were not available. So the only way they can do this by sending a messenger. So messenger will go around and they can decide a time and they can attack. There are two problems here. The first one is what if the messenger is itself cut up or what if the generals are corrupt? Maybe even one general out of the out of all is corrupt, then of course it, they will not succeed. So what is the solution here? And the solution is DBFT. Uh, in the blockchain world as well, when you have multiple nodes, we have to come to a consensus for a particular thing, right? If one of them is corrupt, we have to kick them out. And that's where we have a delegated Byzantine fault tolerance where you basically have a group of nodes. So they will delegate a particular node as the main person. And then, in fact, we can have multiple uh, delegators. If a particular delegate says this is a particular block which is created, all the other delegates can verify that, right? And that's how it works. Basically, we're trying to solve a Byzantine's general problem with the help of DBFT. Okay, and it says, uh, so the average time is 15 to 20 seconds to generate a particular block, and the transaction throughput is measured in about 1000 TPS. This is a good number, which we can see. Potential to reach 1000, 10,000. Now going, coming up next, which is the smart contract system, which is a new contract. If you remember, we have talked about the new contract, right? So if you want to achieve a smart contract, we have a new contract there, which has something called Neo VM. Now Neo VM is very important because that's where you will run your code. It's almost same as JVM and .NET Runtime. So for Java, we use JVM and for .NET application, we have .NET Runtime. Okay, next important thing is the dev pack. Uh, and we have talked about this before, right? We need plugins, we need extension to work on our code. And the best thing is it supports multiple language. So you can select a different IDE. You can support a different extension for a particular language. Okay. Now, one of the issue with most of the blockchain, which I see is the cross chain uh, support. See, every blockchain have a different way of working. And if you want to transfer an asset from one blockchain to other blockchain, it will be tricky, right? And Neo says, hey, don't worry. We have something called Neo X, uh, which helps you for the cross chain asset exchange agreement. And it also uses something called cross chain distributed transition protocol to achieve that. So basically, you can basically exchange an asset between two different two different chains. Uh, storage, also important, right? So how will you store it? Will you use a normal uh, database? No, not exactly. We have to use a distributed storage protocol. And for that, we have something called NeoFS and it uses distributed hash table and the file content. In fact, the, the thing is, if you have a huge file, it will just you know, it will just break those files into small parts and that will be tagged with the help of hash for the indexes. And that's how you search a particular thing with the help of the hash value. Now coming to the most important thing in terms of security. Uh, when I started learning blockchain for the first time and after some time, you know, there were some questions. Hey, uh, blockchain is great. It provides good number, good amount of security. But what about the quantum machines? Because ultimately blockchain is secure because of cryptography, which is PKI. And with the help of quantum system, of course, it's not that mature now. But in future, when the quantum machines or quantum computers will be that matured, will it be able to sustain that. Okay. It is an issue for some of the blockchain, not now, but in future. Neo says, why to take a risk? Let's build a system which is anti-quantum cryptography mechanism. They do that with the help of Neo QS, which is the quantum safe system. So basically you are also safe from the QS. So that's the Neo white paper in short, where we talked about different terms. Uh, we have talked about DFT, we have talked about Neo X, which is the cross chain and Neo FS for the file storage and for Anti-quantum cryptography, we have NeoQS. So yeah, that's about the white paper. I hope you got some idea. So once we start with the programming, it will make much more sense. So that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for the videos. Bye-bye.